Okay. Here we are. Baruch Hashem, here we are again. And uh, let's give the four shlemas to those who need, please. What? The four shlemas? Baruch Ben Yaman Ben Rachel Blima, Yehuda Skolda, Bas Aliza Hana, Shoshana Bas Hana, and um, um, Haim Yaakov Zev Ben Sara. Before of the quorum to all of them. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yes. Um, yes. Fega Bas Shoshana and Esther Fega Bas Chaya Rachel. Before Rachel Bas Mim Chava and Benjamin Ber Ben Chana. Thank you. It's like five ish been drawing the mouth and so having a full shlema. Mamas, but part of it. Amen. Anybody else? Okay. Rosh Chaydesh, Rosh Chaydesh of First day of Av. Hayom Yom. You know, where this month is the birthday of Mashiach, the Isgalus of Mashiach. Okay, so he starts. The unique quality of Mashiach is that Mashiach will be humble. Remember Moshe Rabbeinu, he was one of the reasons he was chosen was he was Onav Mekol Ha'odam. He was the most humble of all people. And that's, and he, he, he what did you say? Hu Goyal Rishon, he's the first redeemer. Moshe Rabbeinu, but Hu Goyal Acharon, he's the last redeemer. So this is an essential quality. A particular quality, he says, the unique quality of Mashiach is that he will be humble. Though he will be the ultimate in greatness and will teach Torah to the patriarchs and to Moshe Rabbeinu. It's an interesting idea, right? Moshe Rabbeinu is a Goyal Rishon and Mashiach will teach Torah to him. To Moshe Rabbeinu, Allah Bashalom. Nonetheless, he, Mashiach, will be the ultimate in humility and self nullification, teaching even. Simple folk, totally selfless in the positive way, right? Totally open, no interferences, no barriers to Elikus, totally a vessel for God, then, for God and godliness. My lesson from Tanya, we're starting a new chapter today, chapter 10, continuing the theme, however, the theme being Yehuda Eloah. The higher level of Shuba. Chapter 10 begins on page Sadiq Tess. So remember, just to, to recapitulate very briefly, hopefully, the Shuba Tata, the lower level head, first Shuba, Pashu He, returning, restoring the He. There are two He's. The lower He is Malchus, the last He in Hashem, the, the latter. Hey, in Hashem's name. Restoring the kingdom. The kingdom being our self-integration and global integration. Restoring it to its wholeness. Right? In the, in the beginning of that shuva is, he says, Aziva Sachet. Abandoning the sin. Abandoning those things which separate ourselves from our God, from our God in heaven. So simplistic, simple. Uh, there's more to say, but that's the kernel of it. Uh, Shuva Elah is after you return, bringing yourself together with Hashem Himself, and it starts with learning Torah. The emphasis in yesterday's uh, section of uh, of this uh, of this Igeres Shuva was that it's about Torah. Now, Torah is, of course, the Hashem's wisdom. That's the yud and the hay, but the, the idea of, of, of brewery restoring the hay is restoring bina, the lower hay, to the midos, coming down from above to below. And today we're going to talk about the flip side of that shuba Allah, which is from below to above. Okay, uh, Perig Yud. 
Hine teshuva Allah zu. This upper level, higher level of shuva, this dafgusa derucha berucha, which is clinging to Hashem spirit to spirit or breath to breath. We spoke a bit here and at length in Tanya about the letter He. And the letter He is, you say it by saying, it has no shape in the mouth. So it comes from the breath. It's just, it's called in the, in the lesson of Kabbalah, Atya Kalila. It's a light letter. And this letter He, this is Bina, derives from Hokma. Hokma is the father, Bina is the mother. And it infuses, what's the next thing, into the Midos. So that's the connection from above to below, from Bina into Midos. And the above to below starts with learning Torah, which is God's wisdom and his breath, so to speak, as it's infused in all of reality, ultimately through the power of his so-called speech. So this is Rucha de Rucha. And we, Ayyidei Torah, we said yesterday, we do it through Torah, Ugaminus Hasodim, bringing ourselves out into the world and acting upon the world in acts of kindness. Hibichinus Hamshocha Milamaila Lamata. So that's the direction from above to below. Liyes Devat Hashem Mamish Befiv, that the word of Hashem should Mamish be in our mouth. His, his speech should be our speech. His breath should inform our breath. His breath which should unite with uh, the meat with his midos and our breath with our midos and ultimately our midos with our action above to below. The Kamashikosov has written a Pasik in Shiahu in Shiahu in Isaiah. It says, the Osim Divori I, meaning God, will place my words in your mouth. Above to below. And the words, of course, are the words of Torah. And it also says, in Shirashim, Yemini Kapkeni. And I will, my right hand, his, his right hand, the Kapkeni, will embrace me. Now, here's the vice versa. His right hand is God's right hand, will embrace me, Bigamilus Chasodim, through his acts of kindness. And we who are created in his image, through our acts of kindness, as we who have something that's with us, something from above, so to speak to give to someone who's lower than ourselves, who's in need. The chesed dere yamin. Because chesed is the right hand. So that's the union of bina, which we had length uh, spoke about yesterday, bina in the Russian husbaininess, to contemplate, and contemplate what? To contemplate the Torah, the words of Torah, and let that inform the midos. However, the person down here below a person down here below, our job is to go from level to level, from lower to higher, bringing the Midos up to Dina, coming and uh, creating a, a fusion, a, a interinclusion ultimately of our Midos in his Midos and our Midos in his Dina, in his understanding that we should feel the way Hashem expresses the way we should be in our in our innermost dimensions through coming from above to below, uh, from below to above. And how does this accomplish? From below to above. This is the level of Shuva law, the higher level of Shuva. This Dafka is Rucha Berucha in clinging spirit to spirit, his breath to our breath. The kavana saleh b'tefila, by the kavana that we have in our heart, in davening, ubefrat b'krishma ubevirchoseha, and particularly in Krishna and the bruchas of Krishna. Today, laimer, in order to say the words that we do say, but to say them sincerely with a heart, v'ahavta es Hashem elakecha bechol lebabacha. Not to just say these words, the Khalavabaka, but to live this way and be this way while we're diving, that we are really giving over our whole heart, Ubakhalnafshika and our whole soul. The emislamite with ultimate truth. In other words, that the words of 
There's other places that the words of 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 uh, tefillah should be words of emes and not words of sheker. And what's that mean? Of course, they're not words of sheker, meaning lie, but make them true, true to yourself, true to your heart, and experience them that way. The chain, and likewise, so that's what it says. Bechol That's how we should do it with our whole heart, with the entirety of our heart. And also, we have a pasuk that says, and these words which I put in your mouth, it continues, should be upon your heart. And when they're upon your heart, speak of them in a heartful way. So that the word of Hashem, and I'm going to sort of say it a little bit differently, let's say it straight first, that the word of Hashem is in your mouth, the emes, in truth, the ain emes elatara. In other words, that the words which come out of your mouth in davening should be full of your heart and be truly heartfelt. And then they are truthfully emes, from Aleph to Mem to Tuf, the entirety of your heart and your mouth and your mind are aligned. The ain emes, elatara. So we're back to the beginning. The, the, word, the words have to be understood the way they are expressed in the Torah. And here the Torah, of course, starts with the written Torah, but through all the Mephoshim and all the Sifre uh, Hakira of philosophy and the Sifre Hakidis and the Kabbalah to bring as much fullness and, and depth to those, and ultimately depth of heart to those words of tefillah as one can. That's restoring the He to the Vav, uh, Yud Ke Vav, the Vav, which is the six Midos, which is the heart, to the hay, to the Bina up above. This is the avoida of Yehuda Elo from below to above. The Chayin, and likewise, the Kayim Kol HaMitzvahs, to fulfill all the Mitzvahs, from the Shikosav it is written, Asher Kid Shonu B'Mitzvahisov. First we'll just take this straight. Uh, he will take, and then we'll just, he will darshan this for us. Asher Kid Shonu B'Mitzvahisov. You have made us holy, with your mitzvahs. Tamei hari es mikudeshes li. Now we're going to take, he's taking and giving us this opening to understand kedusha. What's kedusha? Like oh, when a, a man and a woman get married, the man says, hari at, you are kedushes li. You are separated. Ubechin is kodesh elyon, which is the supernal holiness, which is loshen precious, separating the havdalah. You are separated to me from all other women, and our relationship is a different relationship now, separate, different from any relationship that came before. So this gives us insight into the word Kaddish. Kaddish means, as is, is the notion of the level of Hashem, which is so-called separate. Now, we have learned this at length in Lakuti Amorim. Separate doesn't mean that he's not there. As we say, I'm separating myself from you. I'm no longer here. No, it means that he is here, but in a way that's not discernible, not tangible, and not even expressible, which we call the level of soidical almen. And he goes on and he says, this notion of separation, and I'm at the bottom of the page, I'm going to flip the page. This is the level of Hashem where he is not it says you're able. It's an interesting word. He's not able. He's not within this ability of this kind of light from Hashem to be lislabish toich olmen, to be enclosed in the worlds. So this is a particular vocabulary which we've learned before. Soive, the or has soive, the or, which is transcendent, and it's called makif, which is surrounding and hovering. But we've learned you know, the Rebbe taught us, hovering doesn't mean that he's hovering from above. It means that he is everywhere in an absolutely equal way in everything, from the clod of dirt to the most complex human being to the angels. They all are in the same state of, number one, existence. Their quality is different, but their essential, uh, the essential fact of them being in existence, mehave, that's Yud Kevav Kehave, that they're in a state of existence, Umechaya, and that they have life, 
which is the nefesh, the soul that every single thing has, regardless of its simplicity or complexity. That's a function of the or hasoide, which is not mislabesh. And mislabesh means the or mamali, the light which fills all worlds, which is differentiated. And each and every person is different from another. Each and every uh, well, four levels of, of reality that we know of in this world, inanimate, uh, vegetative, animal, and human, the differences are the, are the outcome of the or amamale, which is called hislabshus. And the equality of everything, this is, this itself is a lesson in itself, diversity and equality totally more operating together, which has a social impact, which we'll leave aside for sure for the moment. Uh, but the two are operating together. Total equality in the sense that ain't od milvado, there's nothing besides Hashem, that's the or ha and total diversity, things are infinitely different from each other, which is or mamale. Long-winded, yes, but that's what he said, that this Kedusha, when we say asher kid shonu, that's a reference to the presence of God as he is soivev and not mislabish. Top of page 198. He's not mislabish, toich kol omen within all worlds, mishun, because the kula kame kalech vashiv, because everything, no matter how complex, no matter how ethereal, no matter how spiritual, the world of Atsilas at the top, right? Not everything, all of it, stands in front of him like nothing. It's considered like nothing in front of him. That's the perspective of Or Hasoyve. That's the perspective of Kedusha. Elohim is now he calls it out. This is called Soyve Kol Alman. Uratzen HaElyon Borotho. It's the will, it's the supernal will, which is in everything. That the earth, the clod of dirt should exist, and that the angels should exist, are all from his simple will, which has at its root, no contours whatsoever. The ultimate peshitas, simplicity. Now he references the place, particularly in uh, the first part of Tanya, where we've learned this in Perak 46. So that's, that's the feeling. To get one's self around and into and heartfeltedly, heart, heartfully express that sense of Kedusha, of the Orha Sodens. The Gam after the feeling, and also after the feeling, what do we say? Elecha Hashem Nafshi Esor. You Hashem, I give over my soul. Nahainu, what's that? It's Davka Rucha Berucha, Kol Hayoyim. To cling his spirit in our spirit. Kol Hayoyim, all day. And all of this comes from the hay, bina, the first hay. Joining the hay, our depth of mind, the meditative, deep quality of our mind to our midos. Who agide his baininess is through contemplation, meditation, or some bina, bigadulis ain't so borhu in the greatness of the infinite one, may he may blessed be he. The omkas hadas. In the depth of our das, our knowledge, our that faculty of mind which ties itself to the heart, Vishtayim Lefanecha, the two brichas before Krishna, U Pesukah De Zimra, and even earlier in the Pesukah De Zimra, the, you know, that we're saying before Brichas Krishna, and neither as is known. Period. End of today's time. So, Shuva Ulam. Yes, go ahead. So, uh, uh, I do understand what you just taught, especially when okay. you talk about in terms of the Shema. I mean, I think I do. It's rather Shem. But still, it occurred to me that since we're talking about um, Lamata Lamaila, we were talking about like bottom up yeah. our effort, our avoda yeah. during prayer, that. Um, it, it seems like there should also be a um, a mamale part to this. I mean, maybe it's both. It's sort of hard to understand how 
if we're doing our effort and we're making a Kaylee, and we're working on ourselves bit by bit, day by day, that there isn't a, a mamale light that oh, comes in of course that there differentiates. Is. So I we didn't really I didn't really of hear course. that. Of course, it's because it's class. not being spoken about today. That's Shubhata talk. Ah. That's restoring one's malchus, one's kingdom, the actions, right? We did say it here that the midos should inform the deeds. We did that, that's the down, but we're focusing today on the midos. How do you get the midos aroused? The midos is a joining of bina. You have to draw bina into the midos. That's our focus today. We mentioned in passing action, right? But action is really the level of begot belongs to Malchus. Malchus is the kingdom. The implementation of all this in the, all the moving parts, uh, which is, uh, is, a, is, is restoring of the hay, tato, the lower hay, to the bod. So if you go from below to above, well, let's, let's go from above to below very simply. Mind, machshava, you know, uh, first lesson in tiny. Machshava, thought, machshava, sholit alale. Right? This is what we're talking about today. Getting the machshava to rule over the heart, the machshava being bina, over the heart, and getting our hearts raised up to that. And then what happens, machshava shabna, that then, the midos are put into action, right, and come down into the hay and mobilize our action. And as we've said over and over again, masa hu ikra. It's just that we're not speaking from that perspective at the moment. What's the purpose of arousing your heart if it's not for action? That's that's your kind of question. Yeah. Well, of course. Okay, is that deal with it? Yeah, thank you very okay. much. Yeah, uh, yeah Peshirifka, what? Okay, but, but we are, at, because we're talking about using the kalim of the Shema, we're talking about very specific things, too. That doing, saying mm -hmm. the Shema, doing tefillah. <laughs> wait, wait, hold it. Wait. You're mixing metaphors. I mean, it, tefillah is an action, but tefillah is not mice, is not in the category of mice and toivin. It's in the category of Avoida, that's the fila. Ugamilas Yeah, but we we say that speech is an action. We do say of course, that. of course. But 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 you have to whenever we're learning, we have to learn in from where, where we are. You can always do this kind of thing. But the Torah itself distinguishes speech from action. Right? Yeah. Not shoga, yeah a different, and different context. So this, this yeah. is what we're doing, distinguishing speech from action. Of course. Your mouth moves is an action. We have we've said that many times in in the, in the Tanya itself, but that's not the perspective we have right now on the table. That which that tefillah is we we number one we learn Torah, right? This is this is our perspective in Shuva Elo. Remember yesterday, Shuva Elo is Torah, bringing Torah into into um, into Midos. In the Imam Shif, the He into the Vav, the six Midos. And today we spoke about the reverse of that, raising the Midos into the He. And the next thing, Torah Avoida, is, of course, all leading to the Midos Vasodim, which is action. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. But there's basically, there's no, I mean, we can focus on one and emphasize one part of the, but there's really no separation, is what I'm trying to know. <laughs> Well, you're right and you're wrong. Yeah. All right. right. That's the okay. part. <laughs> okay. That's good. Rabbi Cameron, yeah. can you explain uh can you explain that line um where that Ashar Kirishanu that Hare Atme that um Yeah, sure, sure. We shoot and then it says and then it continues she yeah, could you he yeah. can I can. I thought I did, but obviously you, you probably, not. No, no, you probably did, but I maybe I was I wasn't <laughs> listening well. Okay, well, thanks for the uh, whatever. Uh, okay, we're explaining. Okay, let's start a little further. A uh, bit a little back. Cold mitzvahs. We say in every mitzvah, right? With a bracha, you have made us holy with your mitzvahs. Now he's explaining what mitzvah, what kedusha means. Kamai. 
I'll say it's a short piece, and we have a few minutes. I'll say today. This so this is like a metaphor. When do we use that word kedusha in another context? Hariat mikudeshes li. You say you are uh, ho you are holy to me in the marriage ceremony, which is bechinas kodesh elyon. Which this is a reference to the supernal holiness, meaning Hashem's quote holiness, which is loshin prisha behavdala. Separation. So what do we know about Hashem being separate? And what do we know about Hashem, obviously, being connected? We know two different kinds of expressions of Hashem. One is called soiviv kalalmin, and the other is called memali kalalmin. And that's memali kalalmin he speaks to on the next page. Uh, 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 the, uh, the negative of soiviv kalalmin is that soiviv kalalmin is not nislabish toich olmin. So I explained, just explained what uh, Tanya and every and all of the cities explains. What's the difference? Hashem, we say, is separate? Of course he's not separate. Ain't old milvado. There is nothing besides him. He's the ultimate in everywhereness, right? But that everywhereness, which is ultimately in the deeper part of him, right, is that level of Hashem, which is expressed in everything in exactly the same way. No differentiation, no contours, no sense of distinction. Distinction is when for one thing to be distinct from another, right, there has to be some degree of separation, right? But here we mean difference. There's no difference. The or soive, the or soive is everywhere the same. It's responsible how everything, no matter how simple or complex, is everything that is, is, of that, it is. That's or hasoide. It's not or mamale, or mamale, and that's the idea of separate. It's not something that can be expressed. It's, and, 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 you know, and as you probably have learned, another quality of soivi kalamin is it's hidden. God's presence is hidden. In mamale kalam, which is hislabshus, that's the word we're using, God's presence or a ray of God's presence, in that you can feel the different quality that exists in a flower than in a piece of dirt. You feel that quality. That's a concept, that's a relative to the Or Mamali, that's how Hashem fills all words. But Or Hasoive is the root of that, but it stands above and transcends and encompasses all of that. Or Hasoive is connected with the crown. The crown is separate from the body. The crown you take off and on. But it's what informs the entire kingdom. The kingdom itself is manifest by the movement of the king's mouth to, eat, to make edicts and his extensions in Mysa, which are his troops and his lawyers and his politicians, and etc., etc. Cetera, et cetera. So that's a definition of Kedusha. Every time we say, Asher Kid Shonu B'mitzvoysov, you are connecting, well, we are connecting ourselves back to the point of Mysa, of deed. When we do a deed of a Mysa, a, a whole Adid that's connected with the commandment in the Torah, we are connecting ourselves at the deepest roots of Hashem, which is Kedusha, the separateness. I hope that helped. So when he said, so he was just talking about the difference between Mimala and Sovet? Right. Islamish is Mimala, and he's Gaina Yochel Islamish, and his essence, or his, his close, his, his his ain't old milvado is everywhere the same. It's not mislabish. Mislabish means differentiated. It's not differentiated. It's everywhere the same. Because because kula kame kilo chashiv? Right. What does that mean? Mishun. Because <laughs> nothing has any degree of consideration whatsoever. Kula kame, everything in front of him at Sora Soive is like nothing. It's considered like nothing because. And Od Milvado, there is nothing besides him. So all of this stuff, from that perspective, which is the perspective of Soive, is garnished. The whole world and all of the worlds, at Silas I'm on down, are nothing compared to the Orha Soive, which is Kame in front of him at a higher level, a deeper level. Ella, as you said, Ella Bikina Soive Kalama. What's what his what his I mean it's hard to say this but 
you know, his, his inner core is present everywhere, but not divisible, not differentiable, not differentiated. It's, 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 it's his speech which differentiates everything, right? Everything is brought into being. The breath of his mouth, he creates all the hosts of heaven. And even breath at that point is not yet really differentiated until it gets differentiated in the Esamar Moris, the ten speeches. And all of that is Kalei Choshi, is considered like nothing compared to his deeper level, the Soivet. But I'm still like stuck wow. on, I'm still stuck on what why he can't be mislabish. So the same, let's say, oxid like oxygen. Right. Oh. You know what? Oh. We'll take. We'll be. I'll be happy to take this offline with you. Okay. But, we, but we, and I would if you want to talk about it more. We could absolutely do that. Thank you. Yeah, Raisa. Good morning, um, Elisheva. I now you are here today, in the end of Paraktes, it spoke about. But you had said that you're sure you heard it somewhere. I just want you to know it's here in Garis Shuva. It said about tying a knot. And it said, that, that it had that language of a rope. And it specifically said about tying a knot in a rope. So I was thinking of you when we did that part. Oh, thank you. Um, oh, cool. Thank you. Yeah. What? And... Practically yeah, speaking, practically speaking, the tying a knot that the Gerasat Shuva spoke about was that part of Shuva would be that you would do more of what than what you had had been. So if your habit was to do a page a day, you would do two pages a day, and that would be tying a knot. So it is what, what, actually not just something mentioned by a. Uh, um, I don't know, a side thing, it's actually mentioned in the Igara Satshuva. Wait, I'm losing. Now, what, is that, what does that have to do with Soiviv and Mamali? No, no, it's a different it chapter. Says, he was always talking about Oh, it's something else. Oh, and it was just else. the parak above. Oh, now, back to where you this, broke. Yeah, as far as this, my <laughs> um, guess is when we say Asher Kedeshanu B'Mitzvosav, my guess is that what we're saying here is that we want to reach that level of great light and um, that that level of great light, Hashem should connect with us uh, from the level of Sove. And this is said in different ways, but here it's saying that you could you could have a Sherki Deshanu B'Mitzvosav that through doing a mitzvah, you could access, Hashem says, Kadosh Elyon, that his essence will be united with the person who does a mitzvah, even though Hashem's essence is not clothed in this world, through the mitzvah, Hashem's essence is united with the person doing the mitzvah. Yeah, you're absolutely right, except with a little twist. It's, the, it's that we unite with Hashem's essence when we fulfill his ratzon because ratzon comes from soyve ratzon is the lower level of the crown so when we do a mitzvah we are doing we are we are connecting remember this this whole parak again you have to keep context of where we're holding is talking about below to above so when we when we do his mitzvah we mitzvah remember mitzvah is lush and safta vichiba connecting we are connecting not just with his, and this is where you're correct, not just with his mamali kalaman, that, that part of him that creates the marvelous infinite differentiation of everything, but with his toiviv kalaman, which is his singularity, his yachid. Yep. All right. Uh, I, since we're talking about mitzvahs, we'll come back to the favorite topic of Maisahu Aikar, right? So the way back, <laughs> the way back, right? Shuva, Tashuve, right? Restoring that, but this is the lower Malchus. Lifting up Malchus is only to the highest level, which is the level of Kedusha beyond Mamale, is only through action. The action of the mitzvahs. Of course, you have to remember some of the mitzvahs are mitzvahs of the heart, some are mitzvahs of the mind, like studying Torah, 
but only through mitzvahs. So that's a pretty good decane for us all, I think. We can all find a way to be more careful or add mitzvahs, meaning mitzvah, tzav, to the Hebrew, deep in our connection every moment. Tomorrow, Yemir Tzashem, to be continued. Amen. Bye-bye.